guys welcome back to my channel again so today i'll be uh, giving you a quick instruction or tutorial on ansible basics for beginners so this is completely um dedicated to beginners and also i'm not a good um lecturer so i might miss few of the theoretical part here but i can give you a very quick um overview of what ansible is and how it works few of the things how Ansible works and I'll be covering the introduction of Ansible, its components, its installation and a few examples to start with. So without wasting time, let's straight away go to the video itself. So in terms of components, Ansible works in a master and host models. What does what it really means is it works as a uh, push rather than pull. So what it actually does is you have a master Ansible node like I've shown in there, uh, which is uh, connected to all other managed hosts, could be n number of managed hosts. And we maintain an inventory containing the details of these hosts, it could be a host name, or it could be an IP address, it really doesn't matter. So once you have these inventories set up in Ansible master node, or let's say control node, so the way they communicate is it works a simple SSH uh, communication like we normally do from our machine to any Linux machine. So as a mandatory part for Ansible to work, you need to have all of the public key of control node or master node that needs to be added to all these hosts so that Ansible is able to communicate or SSS these machines. Of course, I'll be showing you how it's done. So that's that's the thing that you will need to know for now. So in the standard practice, we use port 22. And in my demonstration, I'll be using root as a user. But in actual production, just to make things safer, if the hosts are running in live internet, we prefer different port numbers. But if it's within a closed network uh, managed by firewall rules, we can use the default um, ports as well. So in terms of installation, it's pretty straightforward. You just need a Linux machine. Uh, don't go over the details here. I'll be of course showing you how it actually works. And uh, also one more thing that I like to add is in Ansible. Uh, it heavily depends on Python modules. So all of the modules that you'll be using in the back end, once you start using Ansible and once you start becoming more uh, used to with the process, you will understand all of those are written in Python. So technically we are just calling a Python module in the back end. So just to make our life much easier, um, everything is shown as simple as I will show in the example itself. So and the way we maintain inventory is we just have an inventory file. It could be anything. Just for the reference, I've named this as inventory.ini. You can name it as host, whatever. And it is um, segregated or differentiated into multiple groups. And you need to group the group name. And these are within square brackets and in underneath this square bracket, we just put the host name or IP address. I will of course show all these examples here. So coming to the point, so what's the benefit of having Ansible? Ansible is one of the easiest way to set up a master and node model to manage things in all of the Post nodes. If the examples are, let's say you have a large web server running a bunch of load balancers. Let's say you have like 20 or 50 VMs running. Now you just need to change one single thing in each and every VM. Logging into each VM and doing it manually might be time consuming. So with Ansible, you can just set up this inventory file and change those things up. In a fly. Same applies to editing a file, creating a file, it's a downloading a log file from all of these nodes. 
and it could be uh, changing few configs let's say you want to restart those uh, virtual machines you want to reboot the machines or even you if you want to patch the machines these are the lots of use case that you can find and me being from a devops background i use a lot of ansible in my day-to-day -day life and ansible is so powerful you can even set up a complete cicd uh, pipeline how it works um, of course i'll be showing you in future videos how you can set up a complete web server and even deploy it using pure ansible one of the best thing about ansible is it's easy to use easy to install and easy to maintain that being said few of the examples that i'll be covering in this uh, chapter or in this video is i'll be showing you how you can run a bunch of ad hoc commands in a fly in ansible um, and of course we'll be using playbook based uh, examples as well but if we don't have enough time in this video we'll cover that up in the next video and uh without wasting time now let's straight away go to my um, tutorial videos one more thing uh just for testing purpose here i'll be using this solution and i'll be running ubuntu here uh you can use any linux based machines which supports ssh it works for all of them so going back to the components what i will be doing is i'll be setting off control node or let's say master node then I will be setting up a bunch of virtual machines. Just for the same time, if you have watched my previous videos, I use API a lot. And uh, even for now, for deploying these VMs, I'll be using API itself. So I'll be using this solution here. So if you want to know how I uh, set up those API uh, code, or if you want to know how I deploy those VMs using API, you can watch my previous videos. So coming back to my point here, so terminal. So what I will do is we let's name it Ansible Basics. Ansible. We'll open our thing here, and I'll be first setting up virtual machine. So, what I, so let me open up a, a script to deploy it now let me get my code this is doing nothing but setting up a virtual machine and i will make it as master node you can check back my previous videos to know how i did this if i click here to so deploy something and okay master node has been added here Looks like it's been deployed. Let me open up the terminal. Let me ping it. Okay, I can. Okay, I'm inside the machine. I will just updo update. Let me do the update part now. Once it's updated, uh, let me do a few things. I will give this commands that you will need. So first thing you'll need is virtual environment for it to work. You can check my previous videos or you can just straight away give this command for this thing to get and working. So it's installed. Now what I will do is uh, I will go to home. It can be any place. So I will set up with the, uh, okay. Now I will do it Python 3. So if you do which Python 3, we have some python now python 3 fnm p e and v and i will give this as uh, virtual youtube so this should set up a virtual environment here okay source i mean home so virtual environment being activate if you do is python now it's show same part that i did so virtual environment is now fully activated now next thing i will need to do is python m pip install ansible 
is one thing that you will need for the Ansible to be working. Looks like it's done. Now, like I've said, we will need public key from master node. So key gen. I will use everything default for now. You can always set up a password for future use to make it more secure. What I will need is I will need to go to SSH uh, ID RSA public copying this. Now I won't be showing how it's done. Now I'll be um, learning this part. What I'm technically doing is I'm just adding this in my solution so that but I, while I'm deploying that machine, I already have this public key in my post that I wanted to set up. Ansible master coming here. I will need to add that all of them. I won't show you how it's done. You can always go there and do it. So I will let's say I will deploy just for testing I'll deploy four VM and this is nothing but a fingerprint that I've used so that by default when I deploy it I will have that access sorted from my master control master so I'll deploy it I'll run it my issue is taking my distribution once it's deployed i will start grabbing the via ip address i don't need that part now let's set up let's say this would be my host file so i will name it as youtube and let me grab all those ips now that i will need Go there and let me create uh, an inventory file. I will name it that one. Let me copy this three, paste it here. All right, now what we did is we set up the inventory file, of course, and also we have set up the SSS access. That means this master node is able to access all these machines as root for now because this is a demonstration. Now there are a bunch of commands that, that I will start hitting with just to make sure the SSH is actually working. Ansible. Just few things. All it should show the host. Okay, four hosts. That's what we wanted. Ansible. Now we are just trying to ping all these machines. So all four of them, we can successfully access it. That means our authentication is working. So our master node can now successfully access all these control nodes. So there are a few things that you can now start testing. A few of the things would be, let's say, let's see if I want to check the kernel version of all these machines. The default command would be that one, right? So what I will do is using Ansible I post all shell a now let me hit the same command a right and I will use root as a user. What it'll do is it will now go to all those four machines and give me the kernel versions as you can see here. Okay. Similarly, few things, few other things that you can do is that you can check that big here. So this is an exact example like going to that machine and running it one by one. You can now use Ansible to all to check all of these at once. And the thing it could be it could do is say if you want to check OS release. So you see here, it will go there, it will give all the release versions. I'm using Ubuntu, now there is Ubuntu, so 
yeah that's that's pretty much it in terms of anode commands for these few of the um, commands that you can play with now let's let's take another use case uh where uh you really want to have a workable use case let's say let's say you want to create a log file in all these machines right so what we can use is uh there is a module called file so what we can do is use ansible b i'll give path let's let's target bare temp and let me create ansible to txt and state will be touch so this is nothing but going there and running touch commands in all of the machines let me hit it all right so what it did is it went there and created this file in all of the vms or technically four vm just to validate that one Let me grab one of these chains. If I go here, so if I go to bar temp, if you see here, okay, this is what we did. If you want to ansible host all, okay, I just want to do ls of that uh, temp, right? it will just give you a list of uh, output so see here now these are all of the files now was created when just now see this one that one that one and that one so just to make sure and validate what this is exactly that i was talking let's let's give two right when there it created everything now if i want to you can do ls as you can see you just created files as expected so this is the power of ansible now let's see if i want to write something in all of those files so same file okay now it changed in all of them now noted. We can do cat right so go there yeah same user txt as you can see now all of the, these things have changed just to confirm that i i'm doing same thing like i've said i will log into that machine that uh, where amp and i will try to edit uh, number two and just add it manually paste it mm. exit now if i run the same command the thing that i added manually can be seen here so this is one of the use cases that you can use so now once you know how to execute shell command it becomes a lot easier for you uh, to uh, start using power of ansible now let's say what you want to do is you just want to now remove these files you no longer need it oh i have an m file gonna be same till here argument would be now we just need to give the path that we use the for the file that you want to delete all right now it will go and delete it if i do ls there should be no youtube too all right, um, I think this is working as expected and that's what we wanted as well. Uh, one more thing that I can tell you is, um, let's say if you want to create a folder, all right, and that's that's very easy, easy to do it as well. So what you can do is, the command gonna be very similar, so, It's gonna be file file module like that one and i will give it a directory name here let's say archive and uh what i'll do is state gonna be directory, all right 
now it has created now i will do ls in that temp now you should see rj folder in all of them that's that's one of the ways that you can do it so hopefully uh, i was able to show you a demonstration what i really wanted to show and uh, uh, I, I was able to make you understand how these things were working so just to give a conclusion what we learned or what i explained today is we are from this master node literally controlling four nodes i'm just giving example for four nodes it could be 100 nodes doesn't really matter so it will use a very simple principle it will use sss in the back end that we need we don't need to understand in depth for now so i was able to do a few things i would like to do some recall i was able to create a text file i was able to create a folder i, I was able to delete that uh, file i was able to write that file and i was able to get the um, internal version the os release version just from master node so this is the power of ansible so i think uh, that, that's all for now in my next video i'll be showing you how you can do use uh, ansible playbooks that's all for now see you in next video